Welcome back to the News Hub here at WSJ Live. I'm Simon Constable. Your baby's DNA could be routinely mapped at birth if enthusiasts get their way. Wall Street Journal's health editor Ron Winslow joins us now with the why and the what. And first of all, let's go with the, um, the why would you routinely map a baby's DNA, the sequence of uh, DNA code? Well, in the long term, one big eye notion is that you have uh, a baby's blueprint, genetic blueprint, mm -hmm. that could affect uh, his or her health throughout life, and you might have some information in there that would go in the medical record that could be used over time mm. to guide medical care, to help in prevention, um, to you know be advisable in a variety of life decisions. Now you already but, right now, if you're when when a baby is born, there are some basic tests that are done that do go into your medical right. record, right? And that's what sort of this new initiative is mm. about that the NIH is launching National today. National Institutes of Health. National Institutes of Health, and they are um, funding. Uh, $25 million of research from four different groups around the country mm. uh, to look at whether genomic sequencing of a newborn could improve on an already pretty successful program, mm. which we know I think is the heel stick uh, test, in which babies are tested for a genetic anomaly or some other mm. problem that uh, could be life-threatening, not necessarily right at birth, but within a few weeks, months, or a little bit down the road and where there is intervention that could actually prevent the bad consequences of that problem. Okay, and that's the idea. Now, there's a few uh, things they have to get through uh, before that would be rolled out, and one is right. the, the, the so-called false, false positive, right? right? So it's where we say, oh, Ron, you're going to, and you're, you're this big, and say, so, oh, right. Ron's going to die of this, and but it's not true. Right, so there could be, there's false positives in all kinds of different yeah. medical tests, uh, which is, you know, one of the problems, and if you were to get um, if a test were to say something's wrong with you that's really not, or something's going to cause a problem that's really not, mm -hmm. uh, obviously it would make you, or if you're the parent of an infant, your parents well, quite could concerned. could distress your parents. Stress people out, so you would, it would cost quite a bit of money, maybe, to find out and confirm that actually it's not a problem at all. So they have to actually d sort of let this hit the road. They have to road test this with a sample group first they're, to see if it actually is. To some extent, yeah. I mean, they're doing, there's a lot of research questions that they want to ask. Um, certainly if they found a, a, a very successful program, if they could expand on the, on the conditions now that they know cause problems. Um, some of these conditions leave people with a lifetime of, you know, millions of dollars of expenses. And so if you could prevent that, you have a big cost effective, not to mention life-saving gain. Could, um, question for you, could it cause a bit of stigma if, if, if it says that, you know, X, Y, Z in your, in your DNA sequence, um, maybe you're going to be afflicted with something and that goes in your medical record and then somebody finds out, could that, could employers say, oh, I, I don't want to hire them or, you know, maybe, you know, in a diabolical situation, you uh, get, you know, you know blackmailed <clears throat> or something. I mean, it, it, that, that worries me, that sort of privacy of information. I guess that privacy is um, certainly um, always a concern when this issue comes forward. Mm. There are laws in place that are uh, designed to pre prevent insurance from not covering you, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as more and more, um, as genomics become more and more used in our routine med medicine, um, that there'll have to be more regulation that prevent that kind of discrimination. Okay. It's an interesting story. It's always a pleasure. Okay. Thank Ron you. Winslow of the Health Desk here at the Wall Street Journal.